हेलो फ्रेंड्स नमस्कार वाई परचेज ऑफ प्रॉपर्टी कैन बी ऑन इनकम टैक्स राडा नाउ डेज आई कैन सी दट असेसिज एट लार्ज हैव रिसीव सर्टेन नोटिसेस आइदर अंडर सेक्शन 148 ए ऑफ इनकम टैक्स एक्ट 1961 और अंडर सेक्शन 148 ऑफ इनकम टैक्स एक्ट 1961 बेस्ड ऑन सर्टेन based on certain real estate property purchase related transactions which are reported to them by income tax department that look mr bhatia you have purchased a property say for the financial year 1617 and you have not filed your itr or we want to drill and find out that if you have purchased a property for the relevant financial year what is the source of that particular property purchase that is how you have purchased that much big value of the property so the question comes that when income tax department is asking such kind of information from the assessee what are the various points which the assessee should keep in to mind so through this video my dear friends i am trying to put up my practical views on the topic for the benefit of assessees at large so let's take a tour of this particular topic today so i will start with few important questions which are in my mind in context of which we will have our discussion today number 1 whether purchase of property needs to be offered in itr a very significant question which people keep on asking me that look mr bhati i purchase a property say of rupees 75 lakh do i need to report it in the itr let's see what is the answer to this question second question source of purchase whether to be proved if income tax department issues you a query letter under which it is asking that for relevant financial year you purchase a property and this is the information available in our domain then can they ask for sir source of purchase to be proved by you my prima facie answer to this question would be yes but how on what basis they are asking it we'll discuss it further source of purchase how to be proved now the third important question would be to see that once the onus is on you as an assessee to prove the source of purchase of property how do you prove that particular source and the relevant tds compliance which is to happen in relation to real estate purchase being made by you what is that that i would also be discussing through this particular video so let's begin with the first question my dear friends whether purchase of property needs to be offered in itr see if i talk about a normal assessee who is filing return in relation to his salary income or other source income like interest dividend etc usually individual assessees are filing their return under itr1 itr2 category except those who are doing business and they may be offering itr3 itr4 i may talk about both of them so if i first talk about people who are filing assessees who are filing itr1 or itr2 do such return form requires an assessee to report a property which he has purchased during the financial year my answer to the question is no unless your total income has exceeded or has touched upon 50 lakh rupees you are not supposed to offer which assets including real estate you are possessing for the relevant financial year so if i assume that your total income for the relevant financial year is less than 50 lakh you are not a businessman whether there is any reporting requirement on you for purchase of property being offered in the itr again the answer is clear cut no then the another question which now you will put up before me is then why mr bhatia real estate transactions particularly that of purchase are also on the radar of income tax department the basic mistake which is done by the assessees here is while they are purchasing the property they are not filing their itr there may be various valid reasons for not filing the itr say for an example your total income for the relevant financial year was basic exemption limit but you purchase a property of 75 you can say how is it possible say for an example my father gifted me 50 lakh rupees through which i purchased the property and i have no other income for the relevant financial year so i was under the presumption that since gift from father is exempt and i am purchasing the property with the funds gifted from the father and i have no other income so i am not filing the return this kind of practice is not wrong but income tax department connects it in such a manner that they say because of they receiving the information from the stamp duty authorities that okay anu bhatia has registered a property with 50 lakh rupees and surprisingly in their understanding surprisingly it is the surprise to the income tax department he has not filed the return 
So let's find out how he has arranged 50 lakh rupees when he is not filing the ITR. So I hope you have got my clue that in the year when you are purchasing the property, it would be better to file the return even if it is below basic exemption limit. It will save you from income tax queries probably. Yet it is not a guarantee, but it is an advice from my side which you will find certainly beneficial to you in reference to this kind of approach. Now the next question, that is the second question is, source of purchase whether to be proved. Suppose income tax department has reached to you with a notice that look, for the relevant financial year, Mr. Bhatia, you purchase a property with rupees 50 lakh rupees. And uh, now you tell us what is the source and whether if such a notice is issued on me, I am supposed to prove that source? Naturally, the answer is yes. See, in income tax, there is a specific section that is in income tax law, there is a specific provision which says that if you can't prove the source of investment in a real estate, this video I am particularly making in respect to the real estate related transaction. It may be applicable to other investment also, but let's talk about real estate investment. If you purchase a property, then if income tax department issues you a notice in future, you are supposed to prove the source also. And if you will not prove the source, they will treat it unexplained investment. And if they will treat it unexplained investment, they will apply 60% rate of tax on the investment value which you have made in the real estate. So this basically will bother you and will try to make you attempt that yes, certainly you are supposed to prove the source of the purchase even. Now it does not mean that source of purchase can't be genuine. There are various sources, sir. Say you might have received gift, you might have taken a loan, you might have done a PF withdrawal or you might have received certain uh, gifts from your relatives. But sometimes what happens, people say that, look, I have deposited so much so cash for purchasing property. That is the most dubious thing, sir. I have recently only, few days ago, prepared a video on this particular topic also that how to explain the cash deposited in a bank account. And particularly when such cash is deposited in the bank account with respect to real estate acquisition, that is a risky affair. Unless you can genuinely prove it, you may be in trouble finally when the income tax department would assess to you. So one has to be cautious about the source of purchase. Yes, department can ask you that what was the source and it is needed to be proved by you. Now another question which will therefore accordingly be coming to you if I am asking you that okay let's prove the source. Then the question is how that source of purchase to be proved. Naturally say if there is a gift, you have to provide the affidavit or gift deed of the donor who has gifted you that amount. If it is a loan taken by you, the loan document could be proved. Say you are an NRI because I have seen most of the cases NRIs are also receiving such kind of notices. They were under the presumption that I am not supposed to file the ITR but income tax department is issuing notices to them. Then you have to prove the source that yes, it is a foreign earned income transferred to NRE, then to NRO, it has to be systematically proved. I would also advise, sir, whenever you received a 148 or a 148 notice, rather than attempting directly with the income tax department, you should go with your tax advisor, you should go with your chart accountant, you should go with your tax advocate who can reply the income tax department in their language. Many a time what happens, this is a practical advice and without any interest of mine being created here, I am giving you this advice because many a time we as an SSE keep on giving information which IT department does not understand properly because they don't understand the language of a normal individual, they understand the legal language. And due to this, sometimes people get into a wrong trap. So that is a practical advice which I hope would also be useful. However, I would say, I must repeat that yes, the source of purchase to be proved with support of the documents through which you have arranged the funds for the purpose of investing in the relevant real estate. One more important aspect which is pertaining to the tedious compliance whenever you are buying real estate is with respect to this point, it is to be seen whether the seller to you of the real estate is a resident or a non-resident. How it is important, you must be aware. As per section 194 IA of Income Tax Act 1961, if you are buying from a resident a property valuing rupees 50 lakh or above, then in that case, you are supposed to deduct TDS at the rate 1%. However, when you are buying from a non-resident, maybe the 
value is 5 lakh, 10 lakh, 50 lakh or any amount. You are supposed to deduct tax at source on every single penny which you are paying to a non-resident seller. Sometime what happens that we as a buyer does not comply or do not comply with such tedious related requirement which is a responsibility casted on the shoulders of the purchaser. So if you will skip that, then you may be again on the income tax radar. So through this video, I try to brief you about that particular point, even that you should be careful on that event also. So at the end, I hope my dear friends that the topic selected by me, you will find it relevant in terms of you being cautious. Whenever you are buying a real estate, please maintain proper documentation regarding the source. Please maintain the bank statement through which you have made the payment. Please avoid depositing cash at the time of purchasing the property unless you have 100% defined source for such particular cash which you can ultimately prove. So I hope these advice which I have given to you through this particular video would certainly be helpful to you. In case you have any query, you can write to me. Thank you very much for being with me. Wishing you all the best. Jai Hind.